Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GANSAT Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 27, questions 83 to 86. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at Fisher projections, um, stereoisomerism, and how to identify chiral carbons in, uh, in compounds. So the way it's uh, explained in the unit is actually pretty fantastic. So you didn't have to know anything about, um, I guess, how to draw Fisher projections or chirality uh, to answer this question because it's all there laid out in nice English. But um, there is a couple of things we have to make sure you understand before we move forward. Because with my experience in teaching over the years is that a lot of students, uh, they the training rules fall off when it comes to uh, reading Fisher projections and how to manipulate Fisher projections. So that's why um, I've put here in uh, this package here some tricks that you should know when trying to decipher uh, these Fisher projections. So just recall um, that in Fisher projections, the horizontal bonded atoms, they're coming out of the page. So it's kind of like they're coming out to hug you. So think of it that way. So if we've got the compound like this, so D and B here are coming out to hug you and A are going back into the page. So that's one way to look at it. Also, one thing that I didn't tell you in this stimulus, which actually is definitely uh, going to help you for one of the questions, is that if you rotate atoms in space, you have to conserve the original arrangement. So that's important to note here. So that means bonds going into or out of the page, they must contain the same atoms when they're flipped. So if we take a look here at this example, we've got, uh, say, atom A, B, C, and D. And this is a central carbon here. So it's a chiral um carbon if these are all individually um uh, different atoms but what we see here is that if we move uh b to a so we're moving from going out of the page to into the page then d has to move to the position of c because if you're going to do that you have to make sure it's the same molecule so what ends up happening is if you're moving again a and b they flip so one's going to go out of the page one's going to go in and the same thing with C and D. So it's a nice little trick you can use to actually delineate um, uh, the shapes of same compounds. So as I alluded to just earlier, so chiral carbons, they have this chiral center. So it's attached to four different substituents. So that's also important to remember. So it's four different substituents means that your carbon is going to be chiral. So if we go through question 83, uh, this is going to be important because in question 83, we're asked, for the compounds 1, 2, 3, 4, which have chiral carbons. So let's take a look at compound 1. Let's just draw a quick sketch of compound 1. So it's going to be a pentagon here. Sorry, I, my drawing is not going to win me any awards. Um, CH3, OH. So this carbon here, central carbon, is bound to 1, 2, 3, 4 different atomic groups. Oh, well, it's bound to 4 atomic groups. However, are they different? So we've got CH3, unique. OH is unique. However, what about these two? So you can see if we trace lines here, so there's going to be one, two, three, four, five bonds. But if you trace it from this side, one, two, three, four, five, it's the same uh, substituent. So this carbon can't be chiral because it only has two unique uh, substituents attached. Attached, sorry. So these, this side is the same as this side. So one is not chiral. So if we take a look at two, two is actually easy because we can see that we've got a CH3 and we've got an OH. So we have one, so we've got one, two, three, and the H coming out. Let's just assume it's at the back here. So we've got a H coming out. So you can see that the um, there are four individual groups here and they're all separate, they're all unique. So if you actually draw a line across here, this side is going to be different to this side. So you've got one, two, three, four unique substituents. So two is going to be chiral. So um, also, so this is going to be a chiral center. You can say the same thing for here. Same instance. So it's going to be a hydrogen here. So one, two, three, four. So we've got two chiral carbons here. So two has two chiral carbons. So let's look at three. 
three, exactly the same thing. If we just shift them across, three is going to have two chiral carbons. Number four is going to have so four. We can see you're only going to have one chiral carbon. So it's important to know. So it's a cyclohexane. Then we've got the CH three. So this has this carbon here has one to three substituents. So it's not going to be chiral. This carbon has, so don't forget the hydrogen here, one, two, three, four unique groups. So therefore, this has one chiral center. So four has one chiral center. But the question is asking us um, not about how many chiral centers there are, which have chiral carbons. So the answer is going to be two, three, and four. So therefore, the answer for 83 has to be, sorry, the answer has to be C, 2, 3, and 4. So that's our answer for 83. So now if we clear the screen and go to question 84, it says which of the following correctly lists the groups or atoms in order of decreasing priority. So again, in the stimulus, it tells us those with the higher atomic number are going to be the most prioritized. So if we take a look at the list, we've got a We've got all these functional groups with um, these molecules. So we've got a A has a carbon carbon, B has an oxygen, so a hydroxyl group, C has a carbon bromine, and D has a carbon. So it's going to be the one directly attached. So remember, the atom directly attached to the chiral carbon. So in this instance, the only one that's directly attached to a chiral carbon is going to be B, hydroxyl group, because it's oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight. Carbon has an atomic number of six. But again, you might say, why isn't C the answer? So B is the answer. But you might say, why isn't C the answer? Because bromine, um, whether or not it's uh, the atomic number is high or lower than oxygen, let's forget that for a second. But the reason why it's not C is because bromine is attached to a carbon that's attached to the chiral carbon. If bromine were attached directly to the chiral carbon, it'd be a different story. But because it's attached to carbon, you only assign the atomic weight of the carbon. However, in instances where you might have, um, say, for example, A, C, and D, so A, C, and D, where you've got all carbons, if you want to assign priority to of those three, the most prioritized would be the carbon that's bound to the bromine because you go down the chain. So even though it's not the most prioritized, um, in this list, if you had a bunch of carbon compounds with an aliphatic fatty chain, the one with the bromine is going to be um, the most prioritized because it is higher up on atomic uh, on the periodic table and has a higher atomic number than, say, carbon. So think about it that way. So now if you move on to 85, it says, uh, and this is a good one. So it says, which of the following statements is true about the Fisher projections of compound one and two below. So remember what we said in the intro. So let's just draw it here. So let's actually, no, let me just draw it how it should be drawn. So let's draw it as, remember, coming out of the page, or oh, sorry, going into the page and coming out of the page. So let's draw it like this. So what we have is our hydrogen, hydroxyl group, CH3, and we have our C, CH2, CH3. And we're going to take a look at this compound here. So again, going into the page and going out. So we can draw it here then as CH2, CH3. We've got our H, CH3, and our OH. So you can see just by looking at it like this, you're just like, oh, uh, they're different compounds. But if you if you do rotate it, let's say this way, students might make the mistake of rotating it this way and thinking, oh, if I rotate it this way, this group, so if we rotate it that way, this carbon chain is going to be here, and this hydroxyl is going to be here, and this hydrogen is going to be at the top. And you might think it's a mirror image, but that's incorrect. So all you've done by just rotating it like that is you've still left the same um, configuration. So they're still behind the page. So it's not a mirror image because if you look at it um, in 3D, one's coming out and one's going in. So you can't just flip it around to say it's a mirror image. 
Remember what we learned here. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to flip the opposite sides. So that's what you do here. So if we flip this side of this side and this side of this side, we end up with a molecule that looks like this. So you're going to end up with a molecule that looks exactly like. So if we do that, so remember, flip it, flip it. So that's going to be OH. And you can see now straight away what's happening if we do that. So remember, flip this, flip this. It's going to be here. So CH3, C2. So CH2, CH3. And here you're going to move it across to CH3. So can you see how now, if we do that, we've got the exact same compound. So you can see now that they're actually superimposable on each other. So they're not mirror images, they're actually superimposable just by using this little trick. I know that I'm provided to you in the actual stimulus, but it's something you should probably know. So therefore, the answer for 85 should be superimposable, which is A. So now if we move on to the last question, question 86, it states, consider the following Fisher projections of the compounds 1, 2, and 3. The S configuration is found in. So it's important to remember how to uh, what S R and S enantiomers are or R and S uh, isomerism. So R is going to be clockwise direction. S is anti-clockwise direction. So that's important to note. Also, if you want to read it from the correct way, usually hydrogen is going backwards. So if you've got hydrogen going backwards and say you're, because um, usually hydrogen is the lowest priority, and say you're going to do, uh, let's say you've got um, compounds, so it's going to go clockwise. So let's say you've got something um, where the priorities make sure that when you go from high priority to low priority, it's going to go clockwise. You leave it in this configuration, it's correct. However, if this hydrogen were in front, so out to hug you, and you found out you did the um, calculate all the atomic numbers and you found out which one was the highest priority, and you found that from highest priority when you did the RNS rule, it came out like this, still clockwise. You've got to make sure you, you, you're looking at your, um, your molecule properly. So if your lowest priority is coming out of the page, you've got to flip this. So it's not actually an R, it's going to be an S. So you've got to make sure you flip it. So it's got to flip. So you have to make sure that the lowest priority is going behind the page. So remember that rule. You might have other rules, but that's the best way I remember it, and it's the easiest for you. So let's just take an example. So let's just take a look with the examples here. So let's just see the first one. So let's draw it correctly. So you've got it like that, and we've got it like that. Okay. So we've got carboxylic acid. We've got a methyl group. We have a bromine and we have a hydrogen. So let's just assign priorities. So obviously the atomic number is highest for bromine. Second would be the carboxylic acid because remember if it's two carbons, but the next in the chain is oxygen and then three. So you know straight away if we're going to do the R, the, the RNS rule, it's going to go clockwise. So it's going to go like that. But... Remember, the H here is going outside of the plane. So it's not going into the page, it's going outside the page. The page. So therefore, it has to be not an R. It's not R. It's got to be an S because the R is going out, the, the H is going out. So it's actually supposed to be anticlockwise. So that's why it's an S. So if we take a look at 2, so that's 1. Let's take a look at 2. 2 is a methyl with a hydroxyl group. Methyl, hydroxyl, we've got a, a, a CH2, CH3, and we have a hydrogen. So remember, let's just draw it. So that's coming out of the page, it's going into the page. So let's assign priority. So that's going to be one. That's going to be a carbon, carbon, so carbon, hydrogen. So this is high priority. Three, so it's going to go like this. So remember, if it's going to go that way, and we see that the lowest priority, so here's the lowest priority, lowest priority, it's 
back into the page, which means we're going to conserve our um, direction. So therefore, this is going to be, if it's going in this direction, it's going to be S. So 2 is also S. So now if we look at 3, if we draw it quickly, we've got hydrogen, we've got a methyl group, we've got a CHO, so the carbonyl group here, and we have our hydroxide group. So let's assign priorities quickly. Oxygen is the highest priority. The next one will be the carbon bound to the oxygen, and then we've got our methyl, and then we've got our hydrogen. So it's behind the page, which is fantastic. So let's do the rule. So it's going to go that way. So it's going to be an R. So therefore, the answer for 86, it's asking us which is the S configuration. It has to be 1 and 2. So the answer is going to be B. Uh, sorry, um, the answer for 86, 86 is going to be, uh, yes, D. So 1 and 2, to make sure I read that correctly. So if you're still having difficulty with chirality, reading Fisher projections, and if you just need more guidance, I mean, you can post your comments or queries in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help you. Thanks for your time. Bye now.